I want to share with you the Lectio Divina. It's a Latin word. Uh, it means divine reading. This is an ancient uh, prayer and meditation technique that's been used by uh, the church fathers and the early desert fathers and mothers and all through the monastic tradition, all the different branches uh, and traditions of Christianity for 2,000 years. So this is something we need to know and need to understand because it is essentially the best uh, or the core of how to meditate on the scriptures. It combines, beautifully combines prayer, meditation, scripture reading, contemplation, uh, meditating really deeply, saturating in the word of God, combines that all together in four simple steps. It draws the Bible into your heart. It's not just reading the Bible with your mind, but it draws the words of God from your mind down into your heart. It's a way of finding the message behind the words of Scripture. So looking beneath the surface of what we read on the surface of the Word and the Bible, and going beneath that, the words behind the words, the true message of God behind the Scriptures, or maybe the true message of God for us personally as we pray behind the Scriptures that we are reading. So it has four steps to it. Lectio, meditato, orato, and contemplatio, all Latin words as well, but they're not very difficult to follow. So lectio just means read. So first of all, we read a scripture. Maybe there's a book of the Bible you're working through and just read a chapter per day. Well, sometimes better than reading chapters because the chapter divisions and markers uh, aren't very helpful. Just read what's called a pericope. So it's a section of scripture. In your Bible, it will probably be divided every pericope with a heading, it might be about 10 to 15 verses. So read that several times. Now this, this sounds crazy, but here's a tip for you. Reading a passage more than once is incredibly powerful. It's like the first time we read it, it's getting all the junk out, you're like just getting the scripture off your chest kind of thing. But, but something begins to be unplugged within us. It's like the stream between us and heaven opens as you read it a second time and you read it a third time. And it's like you move from the natural to the supernatural. You read from just, you move from just reading as if you're a grade three student just reciting a, 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 a reading in front of the class. And it becomes something that the Holy Ghost become, begins to get involved in. And as you read it over and over, you'll start to notice that a certain verse, maybe verse two, or maybe a certain word, uh, begins to pop out at you. So I was reading Ecclesiastes chapter 2 this morning and, and the word pleasure kept popping out to me where, where, where the teacher in Ecclesiastes is talking about pleasure and how he pursued pleasure and found that it too was meaningless. And it really stuck out to me as I read over and over that, those small, that small passage. So once we understand it, we read it, we note a few things sticking out to us. Then the second step is meditato. So you know what this is, it's just to meditate. So meditation is where we stop, where we become still, we put aside everything. Often I just close my eyes for maximum concentration and we think through the passage that we've just read and we begin to see Christ in it. We see the Holy Ghost in it. We see, we, we maybe visualize the passage, visualize the story, the parable, visualize the words, just meditate on it, go over and over, mull on it. And imagine being in the scripture, what it looks like. This is where the New Testament is so great, especially the gospels, because you're there uh, on the mount as, as Jesus is given the, the, the sermon. You're there watching uh, the woman with the issue of blood touch his robe being healed and inject yourself into the story to see it from God's perspective. And again, the scripture then that you've read several times in the first step as you meditate will begin to flourish in front of you. God's meaning, the true meaning, what God wants to say to you will begin to come forward. And this leads us to the third step, a ratio, which is to pray. So this is just a simple dialogue with God now. We're not praying anything, and we're not praying about our thoughts or our prayer list or all the things we want from God. No, we pray according to the scripture that we're reading and where the Holy Ghost has led us in that time of meditation. So the third step is to pray, to dialogue, to talk with God, to go backwards and forwards with God. Prayer is not a monologue. It's not just one way me or one way him. Uh, it's something where we go backwards and forwards because prayer is essentially our relationship 
building time with God. And relationships are not built in silence, although silence is important, but relationships are built uh, on the word, on talking backwards and forwards. You, you can't, it's very difficult to know someone without ever hearing them talk. Essentially, that's what the Bible is. It's God talking to us so that we can see his nature and how he is and understand how he thinks and how he works. So uh, oratio is where we pray. We thank God for the word. We appreciate the scripture that we've been going over. We seek a deeper understanding from him. We ask him, what are you saying to me through this passage, Lord God? What does this mean for me? What should I do with this? Where is obedience required here? Where do I ultimately need to change and be transformed by this word? And you pray that backwards and forwards with God. And then finally, to finish the Lectio Divina is contemplatio, which is to contemplate. So contemplate means to uh, ruminate, it means to think upon, it means to sit with. So to sit with the scripture, where you found yourself in the meditation, what you've prayed with God, and as you finish to sit with that, it's like a funnel. We start with the scripture reading many times, and then we meditate, and then we talk to God. It really funnels down to contemplating what is the final action required of me today. And this is the power of prayer, that it doesn't only, it's only not only the relationship building and the talking to God and the bearing of our soul and the growing spiritually, but it results in action. It results in execution. It results in God wants to do something. God's kingdom wants to move forward. God wants you to move forward with him in destiny. And maybe sometimes part of that moving forward is forgiveness and letting go of things and doing those kinds of things. It's not always a moving forward of, uh, of action and running and fighting and winning, but sometimes the moving forward is on restoring and fixing and going back and renewing and things like that. So the contemplatio brings you down to the bottom of that funnel and, and you really note what God is saying to you today. The Lectio Divina, 2,000 years of being practiced by the church, the greatest contemplative prayer masters that we've had of the last couple of millennia swear by this. It's something to practice. Remember, these kind of prayers and meditation techniques are not something that are going to come naturally. You have to work at them. They're almost impossible uh, to really get a hold of. You've got to work at it. You've got to refine it. You've got to practice it over and over and again. There's a reason why this ancient prayer technique is still so relevant today. And that's how you practice Lectio Divina.